I'm here today with uh, Sheriff Peterkin. Sheriff Peterkin, um, could you tell me how long have you known the Floyd family, or George? I have not known them long, but I'll be honest with you, I feel like I've known them pretty much all my life because the family, when they reached out to me, uh, it wasn't from a logistic standpoint. It wasn't be, uh, because we were sheriff and law enforcement. Uh, my name was given to them to help them prepare for all of this. And so I've actually been involved with funeral preparations, uh, funeral homes, the whole nine yards. I mean, they have trusted me with a whole lot, and I'm very humbled by that. So I, I've not known them, even though Bridget Floyd lives in Hope County. Uh, I just feel like I've been part of this family for a long time. Okay. And uh, what would, uh, if you had opportunity to speak to the family, what, uh, what would you say to them today? I've spoken to some that's here. I, I just want to say to them that I love them and I respect them. Um, you know, my heart hurts. I've told them, some of the family, this already. I don't appreciate or condone any of the behavior of law enforcement who have racial issues or prejudice. This is not me. This is not, this is not a lot of, when I say this, I'm speaking for a lot of law enforcement all over the world. It's a small percentage of it, you know, and there needs to be some house cleaning throughout this whole U.S. and law enforcement agencies. We got to get the bad seat out. There, you know, I tell agencies all over the world, if you see smoke, don't let it burn. We don't need that. You got to get it out because this can't continue happening. This, this, you see the, you see the impact that this has happened, that has happened since George was, was, was killed. And it still hasn't stopped. It hasn't calmed down. People are still mad. They're still protesting. Some are doing it violently. Some of them won't calm down. If this continues, God, it's going to be devastating to the world. And I'm going to be honest with you. I, I, you know, we shouldn't have wars on our own soil, okay? But if this doesn't get under control, there is a war starting in the United States on our own soil where we having to use military and, 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 and National Guards and all that to calm down something. Our focus shouldn't be fighting right here. But this generation that we're dealing with right now are not going to sit still. I, I look at it, and I'm a firm believer that the life that I'm living is a result of what Dr. King did and some of those other followers who civil rights leaders over the years and I think this new generation that's, that's standing out there now fighting for something, fighting for change, is going to set the stage for what's to come for my grandkids and their children and grandchildren. I really believe that. But they're not going to sit, they're not going to sit tight. We got to get this right. Yeah, okay, thank you. And uh, uh, on behalf of Tracy Carter up in Sanford, he asked me to, to do an interview with you. So um, Tracy told me to tell you that he pretty he uh, really appreciate you reaching out to him as a friend, right? To uh, to give him a helping hand. So, is there anything you want to say to Tracy? Let, let me tell you what. Uh, definitely, different. Tracy is not just a sheriff, a fellow sheriff in the state of North Carolina. I consider him on a brother status, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I love this guy. We when we talk, or even when we see each other, we don't walk away without one one of us saying it first. I love you, and that is awesome for uh, uh, that county. Yes. Lee County is blessed to have him. You know, I hope, you know, I, we come in pretty much about the same time. I think I may have been a, a term ahead of him. But, uh, but I think the North Carolina Sheriff's Association is blessed to have Tracy Carter. And the citizens of, of that community in Lee County is blessed to have him. So I want to say to my brother, thank you for the relationship that we have. Thank you for being there for me, being a pillar in my community and helping me. I mean, it's nothing for him to call, reach out to me when I've had death in the family. He's standing right beside me. And you just don't have that everywhere. He's awesome. Okay. Well, we can't do the old hug. So I like to be a comedian sometimes. <laughs> so we can't do the old hug for Tracy Carter, so we'll do the chicken wing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here this morning with Gibbert Bates. How you doing, Gibbert? I'm doing well. It's a good day to be out here, good day to be alive, good day to be in Hope County. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gibbert, well, you know, as you know, we've been knowing each other since probably 1997, 1998. Because you taught my son. Yes, I did. We ain't holding that against you. <laughs> I think he understood some of the things you were talking about in those courses you taught him, but I appreciate you looking out for Gilbert Jr. Yes, yes. Matter of fact, I taught him uh, technology education at, over at Westover. And mm -hmm. uh, I want to let you know, I never had a discipline problem with it. But we're here today. Uh, tell me, how do you, um, if he has he had anything to say to the Floyd family, what would you say to him? Well, I've already said it, you know, and, you know, let me, let me also start off by saying, this is not about me. It's not about any of the media folks. My job is 
I'm the voice for the voiceless. So what I say and what I feel really isn't that important. Of course, I have my own personal opinions, but as a journalist, I keep those to myself. I, 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 um, I, I, I empathize or, or sympathize with the family. I've conveyed that to, to Bridget, and I've given her a platform for her to say what's in her heart, what's in her mind. And that's what, what we do as journalists. You know, I don't have any personal opinion either way. Do I think something's right or wrong? Well, of course, I know in my own mind, but uh, I, I, don't, I don't try to take time to, to, to get into to all that. What I do is make sure that I'm the voice for the voices, so for the folks who don't have uh, a platform to, to um, say what's happening to them, some injustice or whatever. That's what I do. Okay. I give it. And, uh, you know, um, I... Uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to just, you know, to talk to uh, a little short guy like me. <laughs> but anyway. No, let me tell you, everyone is important. And I always take time. You know, people call me um, with all kind of problems. Some things I can help, some things I can't. You know, sometimes people think they need a reporter when actually they need an attorney. You know, so I could do a story on something, but you still have your problem tomorrow if you don't take care of the legal things that you need to do in order to resolve the problem. So that that's... And I know very quickly if they do have a story. And so that's what I have to do. Then the other thing that I do is I'm a compressor of time. You know, and what I mean by that is if I'm in a courtroom and the court proceeding goes on all day for four or five hours, I've done them at Fort Bragg or whatever, it's my job to compress the time and tell that story that took four to eight hours in a courtroom in a minute and 30. Highlight the points so that people can get an understanding of what happened in a particular story. Same thing is true here today. This is going to go on all day. The marches that we've been on last week lasted for hours or whatever. Then I had a minute and 30 to tell it. So I'm the compressor of time. It's, it's up to me to interview folks to let them have a chance to have their say. And, and so that's my charge, and I take it very personal. I've been doing this for 47 years. Started back in 1973 uh, in uh, Carlisle, Pennsylvania, and have worked in Ohio and, and um, and, and also down here in North Carolina on several stations, about every radio station in Fayetteville, uh, either as a news director or, or as a disc jockey. And that's the other thing. A lot of folks don't know that more people know me as a DJ than know me as a newscaster. I'll see people walking down the street or in Walmart or whatever, and they say, Gilbert, you did my prom when I was in high school. <laughs> so and uh, my son is following my footsteps, and I'm very proud of him. And uh, I will tell my good friend, Margaret Murkerson. Okay. That, hey. Uh, Margaret. <laughs> hey, Margaret. Hey, Margaret. <laughs> yeah, I will tell my good friend, Margaret Murkison, that, uh, that you uh, say a, a very good morning to her. Absolutely. A very good morning to you, Margaret. And I wish you were here doing your thing. But um, we will represent for you. Okay. Give a, we can't hug, and we've been knowing each other a long time. So I like to be a comedian sometimes. So we do the chicken wing thing. Chicken wing thing. We got it right there. The chicken wing thing. Okay. All hey. right. We appreciate you so much, too. I appreciate you. Know, you. And he always kids me every time he sees me. He says, Gilbert, you don't, you never remember who I am until I say I taught your your son at Westover. And I said, well, you know, I do meet, meet a lot of people, mm -hmm. but um, you're always in my heart. So I appreciate what you've done for my family. Okay, appreciate you. Okay, all right. Okay, Take okay, care. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Yep. Okay. Good morning. I'm here at the Rayford Conference Center with Anna Rivera with ABC 11. ABC 11. And so, Anna, how do you feel about covering Mr. Floyd Memorial Service? You know, it's a, it's a moment in history. I think that there's a change happening in our country, and you always look back at history, and you think about uh, what people were going through when there were race riots happening in our country, and you think that it's so far off, and then when it starts happening and you're, you're a journalist covering it, it's a reality check and you really start to look within yourself. Uh, and there was one thing that I, I, I did this week was my fiance is a black man and we've known each other since high school. And you start to, I, I always have my journalist hat on and this week I had to take it off and listen very closely to what he was saying and learn about him. And I think that that's helped me cover these uh, these events and the protests and the demonstrations and all of it. Um, and I'm so proud to be in the position I am to be able to cover this and bring the facts and the moments that people can't miss. Now, if you had opportunity to speak to Mr. Floyd family, what would you tell them? You know, we talked to his uh, some of his family earlier this week, and I, I think our message to them is, is we're, st we're standing with you. 
uh, no one should, no family should ever have to go through such a tragic thing and then have to relive it the way they are. But we hope that we're covering his story and his life and his legacy uh, that in a way that makes them proud. Thank you so very much. We're here today at the Rafer Conference Center in Rafer, North Carolina with Ellen McLaurin. And could you tell me the reason why you came down here today? Yes, sir. I came out because uh, this young man suffered so much um, during uh, his ordeal, what he went through. And I'm also very moved by what his life stood for. And I'm also very moved by all the people and all the compassion. And also because of it just provoking so much in everybody that we must look at racism that we must learn to love people irregardless of where they are, who they are, what color their skin is. We must be able to change this. It is time out for racism. It is time in for love. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what, what would you say to the family if you could have the opportunity to speak to them today? If I could speak to the family, I would say thank you for giving us such a loving, giant gentleman because I don't know him but I've watched the people who have described him on TV from um, where this ordeal occurred and everybody talked about him as being a loving person and being a gentle giant and so I would say thank you to his mother for giving us such a just a, just a loving uh, young man and I am just so sad about what happened to him but I will always remember him because of his ability to cause change in this world. Thank you so very much. And I'm sure that the Ford family will deeply appreciate the wonderful comments you said. Thank you. Thank you, mm -hmm. Thank you again. Mm -hmm. Today at the Cape Fear Comfort Center in Rafer, North Carolina. And I'm with? Uh, Greg Packer, P-A-C-K-E-R, Huntington, New York. Huntington, New York. So, Greg, so did you come all the way down from New York to be here at Mr. Floyd funeral today? Uh, yes, I did. As, uh, as I was in Brooklyn at the protest, and as I was there, I knew there's, there had to be some way for me to be here today, and I'm very honored to be here. Okay. And what would you say to Mr. Floyd family if he had opportunity to speak to them today? I want to express my condolences, that I'm very sorry for the loss of, George, you know, the brother George, and we should never have to experience anything like this with anybody ever again. Okay. Now, how did you drive down here or did you catch a plane or tell me how you came to North Carolina? Uh, I took an Amtrak about 3.30 yesterday and I got to the uh, Fayetteville train station about between like 1.30, 2 o'clock and I got here close to 3 in the morning. Well, welcome to North Carolina. The next time you come to North Carolina, I hope it's on a more joyful occasion. Absolutely, and I'll be very happy to take you up on that. Okay, we'll do the chicken wing thing. Okay. James, stay for now.